Hi everyone, I'm Reverend Joya and I wanted to bring you a sound healing mantra to help you free yourself from the bonds or the binds of not forgiving yourself. I have been doing a training and I've been doing many trainings actually in sound healing over this past year, especially this year of 2022. I've been going to countless places, countless people, countless teachers studying with masters because I know that the power of sound, the power of vibration has the power to free you, to awaken you in ways that you don't even know that you can be awakened to. There's a, um, a deepening that happens that hmm, is just beautiful and surprising. And it's, it's almost as if you plant some seeds in you and or a garden, let's say you're planting a garden and you plant daisy seeds and up grow beautiful peonies and you weren't expecting that and you're like oh my gosh i was not expecting that so that's really um i'm finding in my own life and in my own practice what the practice of sound healing is doing for me and it's really clearing and creating this space to allow for this self this capital s self <laughs> to emerge and expressed out of the being of me out of my meanness. sound also is sound healing when you're using it for intention Jonathan Goldman said that sound plus intention equals healing. And so it's really about the intentionality that you set with your practice and I I found that same energy to be true also with painting when i'm doing expressive art or teaching expressive art that it's really the when you allow for the flow and you just set your intention of uh, healing a wound healing you know whatever your focus is whatever your intention is that that's specifically what that laser beam of energy gets focused onto and the same is very 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 even more so true of sound because sound is vibrational and we know from science scientific research studies about entrainment and brain entrainment and what happens when you change your brainwave states sound instantly changes your brainwave states it happens when you meditate but it takes a little bit longer it takes a little bit more time to naturally or to eventually i should say um, get to a space of meditation where you're able to quiet the mind and still the body whereas sound can do that for you instantly it's like four minutes and your your brain waves are, are changed it's remarkable how fast it works and then when you're using a mantra with sound or even just a sound with your voice and that's the invitation that we're going to do this practice together when you're using your own voice you're you're using sound from the inside out so you can hear sounds coming in from the outside in which are entraining the brain because it's going right into your ear Right, those sounds are coming right into the ear, which go directly into the brain, and then they also are connected to the vagus nerve, which goes around the ear and through the brain and through the face, actually, and then down through the throat. So when we speak, we are stimulating our vagus nerve, and then it comes right here into your thymus, and then from there, it just branches out into every organ of your body. So your voice is the number one tool that you have for stimulating your vagus nerve which is what calms down your nervous system not only that but i love you know going to a more uh, esoteric perspective i love the work of dr emoto where he has studied the effects of words leaving um, mandalas or cymatic imprints onto water we are all water and we know that sound is more conducive and travels better through water than it does through the air through the airwaves so what's really fascinating to me about that is that not only the work of dr emoto but there's also science uh, the science of cymatics or sound you can see which has been around for a couple of hundred years now actually longer than that and i'm gonna i'll talk about that <laughs> but cymatics is when you're creating a visual representation of a sound and it makes a mandala it makes a beautiful perfect mandala unless it's discordant then it makes a messy mandala 
So we know that those sounds, or I know that those sounds, this, I, this is my own theory, and I've talked to other people about it, that that is the imprint that's being happened on our cells when we're listening to music, when we're playing music, when we're speaking, when we're singing, and we're holding an intention that we can visualize these beautiful sacred geom geometry imprints being imprinted onto every cell of our body. And I said that cymatics have only been around for a couple of hundred years from Hans Jenny that we've like that's the person who well, supposedly did it intentionally. But what's really remarkable is that that's not true, because when you go to sacred sites and there's a book called um, The Sacred Science of Acoustics, I think it is something like that. And a, he went around to all of the sacred sites and discovered that the symbols that they had on the walls there and we're talking places that are thousands of years old, including the pyramids, when the sound is made in the chamber, you find the right frequency that this vibrational um, imprint would appear, whether it's in the sand or in uh, smoke filled air, that these imprints imp appear that were etched onto the walls, which is so remarkable if you think about it. How did they know? How did they know? And that they really understood and had this, the ancients had this deep understanding of the power of sound and it's affecting our external reality it's imprinting on the field of the quantum field of potentiality we can think of that when we're making sound we're sending out a, a request and that request isn't what we're saying the request is the energy the set the request is the vibration that we are putting out and we're putting out this energetic vibration with our voice every sound that we make we're sending out an, an impression and then, of course, there's the invisible energy of intention. So that's why just a little bit about why I love working with sound so much. <laughs> and it really is profoundly healing. So I want to invite you to tone uh, just saying ah with me. And when you're toning that ah, that you're opening your heart. And when you open your throat, you open your throat chakra and you open your mouth, you envision your tongue being tied down to your heart muscle so that you are speaking from your heart. You are toning from your heart. You are singing from your heart. And this is not about sounding like a singer. This is not about sounding beautiful. This is about authentic, heartful longing, heartful imprinting onto the universe. Um, and you can think of just a simple mantra. It could be empty me, heal me, awaken me. Um, grow me, whatever, whatever it is that is that comes to you. So with that, I like to keep, I'm using this big buffalo drum today and um, I'm going to put it on my lap because I like the feel of it. I like the feel of the vibration on my body. It feels good on my heart chakra and on my um, solar plexus chakra. And then I'm using a bowl, which is an A sharp. That's my grandfather. Before we begin the practice, I invite you to just attune to your heart. And if your heart is hardened, I understand that because mine was for a long time. And when people would say attune to your heart, I was like, I don't feel anything in my heart. My heart is numb. My heart is walled off. So if that's you, then ask for your heart to be opened. And it really, really, truly just takes the faith of a mustard seed. And if your heart is not open, then that can be your beginning ask to open your heart, open my heart, open my heart. So bring your intention to your mind.
universe. to hear how you feel at the end of it.
and with the sound of the sh, it's so I invite you to take a deep breath and say shim with me three times. It's S H M. I hope this practice um, made you feel a little bit different than you did before you began it. I know I feel good. <laughs> it's vibrational medicine. All right, darlings, I'll see you next time. Bye.